Mark Belt from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, here today to show you a jacked and tan shoulder routine. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get in a little triangle here. It would be a circle, but we only have three. And we're just going to do some uh, little arm circles, something I learned from Mikhail Kokilev. He said, rush in the warm up. And he started just going like this. And he started going like this. So we're going to do a little bit of that just to get the shoulders warm, just to get them ready. Fucking simple. I don't know whatever happened to calisthenics, but. They're still good today, but no one seems to ever use them. A little bit of arm circles. You feeling the burn, Mike? I feel like I'm in PE class. Where are you feeling it the most? Um, somewhere around here. Looks like it's going to the schnoz, kind of. <laughs> right next to the sexy stash. All right, bring them back this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have to do exactly three sets of 20, otherwise this won't work. You can do them slow, you can do them kind of fast. You can do kind of one arm at a time. Just kind of get it going whatever way you want to get them going. Just trying to get some range of motion. Just trying to get the shoulders ready to go. You can even do some band pull-aparts if this is too weird for you. If you feel like this is too strange. But you're just trying to get the shoulders ready to go for what you're about to do. The first thing we're going to do for today is we're going to do some side lateral raises. And we're probably going to incorporate some more side lateral raises later in the workout, but we're gonna kind of pre-exhaust, pre-fatigue the muscle a little bit before we get into uh, doing some dumbbell overhead presses. Pretty simple movement as a power lifter, or even as a bodybuilder. Um, it's not really a big deal to get a little momentum, to throw a little body English in on some of these exercises. Uh, as Ed Cohn has mentioned and past guests have mentioned before, sometimes when you get a little momentum, it actually helps you uh, get a little further range of motion. One thing I would suggest uh, when you're doing this movement is that you at least try to get a little resistance at the top. So if you are going to quote unquote cheat and get some body English into it, that you try to hold it a little bit at the top or at least catch it a little bit as you're coming up. Kind of weird to figure out where to put your hand. You can just kind of put it on the machine. You put it on your hip, it feels a little too weird. But as you're coming down, just try to resist against it a little bit. We're going to do like 10 to 12 reps for this particular exercise. 98. Ninety-nine. One hundred. Obviously, you want to make sure that you do equal amount for both sides so you don't end up with one retar re retarded giant arm. Remember that South Park episode when he had that one giant arm? Me bad, Bubba Chomp. He kept going like this, and he killed everybody. He just had one jacked arm? Yeah, he had one huge arm. I call it the Nemo effect. <laughs> Finding Nemo only has like one fin or something. Oh, really? Yeah. He's got one tiny fin and one big fin. One Tom fin? One Huck fin. Huck fin. One dorsal fin. Some people have a little bit of trouble um, kind of activating certain muscle groups for whatever reason. Damon over here has got some big, big pipes, so he doesn't have any problem getting his pump on when he does pipes, but I've run into other people in the past that have a little bit of an issue getting into the shoulders or getting into the hamstrings. And whenever you have an issue like that, a simple way to solve it is to pre-exhaust. So we're gonna do three sets of 10 on this before we end up hitting up some dumbbell presses. We're not supposed to be in sync. Baby, bye, 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 bye. That kind of insane. We gotta, yeah, we gotta dance this round. Call it the lawnmower. Oh, it's starting to kill. Are you supposed to get lightheaded? <laughs> yes, because you're not supposed to be eating any food because we have the LA Fit Expo coming up. I haven't I told eaten, you. I haven't eaten you in 10 days. Some goddamn yeah, weight. I haven't eaten in 10 days. Water and lettuce. And a lot of training. Cauliflower for the yeah. dessert. Yeah, Mike is, it was an unacceptable body fat range for our booth. We have a disease, it's called being fat. <laughs> <laughs> Obes obesity. Um, a lot of people, um, I, I get a lot of questions about, over the years about mm. training your shoulders mm. because 
Mm. We do so much bench pressing, so sometimes people don't think that training your shoulders is as important because you get a lot of direct uh, shoulder work and doing a lot of different bench press movements. But you're going to want to do some other isolation type movements for your shoulders just to make sure that you have the support necessary to lift big weights. Let's tell all these new subscribers what the hell Jack and Tan means. Basically, our whole goal is to look like a bad motherfucker. I want you to go in that bag and find my wallet. Which one is it? It's the one that says bad motherfucker. Which I'm not doing very good of, but it's still part of the mission. And two, That's part of the mustache, though. So. Yeah, yeah, that's the only, all I got is the bad motherfucker part. And then to lift like a bad motherfucker. So all our workouts kind of, besides the pre-fatigue, or we almost just call this a warm-up. Uh, besides this, we try to lift our heaviest weights, our biggest movements first. So we're going to go into an overhead. Uh, and then trickle your way down. Then we'll go to uh, maybe a side lateral with uh, dumbbells. Something you can handle a little heavier weight. Work our way, way down, work our way down, and with something like a face pull where you're only using 30, 40, 50 pounds. Same idea works for the bench. Start with the movement, you use the most amount of weight, trickle your way down to a pec fly, you're using the mo uh, least amount of weight. Lift heavy weight, get strong, lift a lot of reps, isolation, get jacked. Speaking of getting jacked. Yeah, there's no reason why you can't have it all. You, there's no reason why you can't chase after two goals at one time. A lot of people say that that's counterproductive, but if you do it over a long period of time, or if you do them uh, separately for short periods of time, that's the best way to go about you, doing it. Are you talking about cycles? <laughs> Unicycle. No. I talk, I'm talking about, <laughs> let me simplify it, I'm talking about steroids, everybody. <laughs> you need to get on a lot of steroids. I meant training cycles, but that works. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> of course. Yeah, training matters a little bit. Training makes up about 5% of, of the way that you're Yeah, what percentages up. do people make that shit up? I they, don't know. I don't they know. say diet's 90%? Like, yeah. you don't know. I don't know. No one knows. It's 50% uh, mental, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50% <laughs> mental, 50% physical? What does Picking that even mean? Picking up 600 pounds is like, it's not mental. Yeah, well it's the same as CNS. Like your CNS is you, so like, my CNS is fried? Right. Does that mean you're fried? Your brain's <laughs> fried? Your muscles are fried? That's all your CNS. I'm no doctor, but. It's starting to sound like it, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Starting to sound like Metaphorically it. Metaphorically speaking. But my point was is that you can kind of chase after two things at one time over a long period of time. So. In 2016, if your goal is to uh, bench press 400 pounds, and then your goal is also to have abs, it might be wise to chase after one thing at a time, but over the entire year, you can accomplish both goals. That makes sense, everybody? Goddamn Tony Robbins. What page are we on, Mikey? <laughs> 43. That's goddamn right. The Tony Robbins of fitness. Because I said so. Tony Robbins. He's got the giantism of the head. You got, got the giantism movie. of the cock. He has huge hands, too. Oh, I bet he dead looks like a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Bart asked me the best question yesterday. What celebrity would make a great power lifter? I said The Rock. That was a kind of a cheap one. What do you got? Michael Chiklis. Is that his name? I don't even know the who that is. The little cop guy. Is that his name? Anybody know? I don't know. The, uh, the bald guy. He's on um, yeah, the fucking show. He was on a cop show, but he's short and stocky. That's what I said about Danny uh, DeVito or some shit. Yeah, yeah. I said, uh, who's the fat white guy in Hitch? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that guy would bench. Kevin yeah, Kevin James. Kevin James would bench like a motherfucker. I'm so bad with celebrities' names. What's the guy in... Uh, Oh, that's the guy in, uh, in, what's Bane? What's his name? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Yeah, he's pretty jacked. He looks like he uh, can get kind of thick. Even though know? what's his name already does like deadlift and stuff, uh, Hugh Jackman, like when he deadlifts, he locks out like right here. Oh, like, yeah. He's be, so long. It'd be so hard for him to bench. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. But if he put on some weight, he'd probably deadlift like a motherfucker. That's true. Yeah. He does deadlift pretty good, doesn't he? Deadlift I think, like 465? I think he pulled five. I think he five pulled five. five, like squatted three, benched two something. He broke a thousand, whatever yeah. the hell that means. Yeah, and some people will say, oh, you know, that's he's a pussy or whatever. <laughs> you know, some people will say, oh, it's not that good. But it's like, the guy's got like eight figures in the bank. You yeah, know? when he's on set all day, yeah. every day. He's a good looking son of a bitch. Too. Oh, my he's God. Got, huge cock. Yeah. Great life. Woo! He's got a lot, of, a lot of great things going all on. That. On top of being ripped, he's also strong. Yeah, he's like a buck 60, I think. It's not like right. he's huge. I mean, you can just make an argument like that he doesn't have to train that hard. Yeah. He just wants to. Well, who knows with the scheduling, he might only be able to work what out once a week. What was our question on YouTube that we got? Um, Set off alarm. About the dick or yeah, something yeah, else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About being in a deficit? Yeah, you <laughs> can put that, I think, on any lift, but if you could add 100 pounds to a lift per inch taken away from your wiener. What would you do it? What would you add to and your... And how far would you go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 
Lucky for us, we all have 12 inch dicks, so yeah. we could add 600 pounds oh, to our total. We got a lot to spare. And still be average. But besides that. We have that, a lot to spare. <clears throat> I mean, if, if you have a three inch dick, you should probably not worry about you your should, total. Yeah, you should hang on. Yeah, you yeah. should hang on to every bit. But if you got, if you got an eight incher, you could give yeah. 200 pounds up. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the final question was, how far would you go with it? Would you end up in a deficit and have a vagina? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that would be bad too then. What if you're totaling 2,600 but you get a vagina? Yeah. That's kind of all weird. Yeah. Somebody reaches down there and there's nothing there. Who reaches down there is the Some, question. Yeah. Well, even yourself is going to the bathroom. <laughs> You'd be sad every day. Face yourself in the mirror. Can't whip it out anymore. You know, I don't know. I guess, I guess like, uh, the real question is, is this a permanent situation? Oh, is it just for your meat? Or is it just, yeah, because if it's just for a little while. So you'd bench 800 with a vagina, and then the next day bench 400, but have your wiener back? Yeah, yeah. That'd be fine? Yeah, that would be <laughs> totally acceptable. I woke up this morning with a bad hangover, and my penis was missing again. This happens all the time. It's detachable. <laughs> As long as we got it for Instagram. Let's move on. One thing I want to bring up here is, is that, so if your hat is backwards, <laughs> this is a huge problem, and you already grabbed heavy dumbbells, you're really- You need a, a teammate. You're really in a rough spot, and you got to turn your hat back, so you can't really, like, this never really works out too good when you're here, and then your hat yeah. gets all pushed off and sideways and everything, so. Yeah. Same Kids, way. use, you know, take, take a second, turn your lid forward. The real issue is, is when you're doing a uh, overhead press, with a bench, and then you're doing a pull down to the front. And so you not only have <laughs> then to super- your hat just keeps spinning and yeah, spinning and spinning. You have spinning. to superset your hat position you're as just, well as the exercise you're position. You're just doing this the whole time. Yep. This gets the shoulders burning, Yep. the arms, triceps, biceps. That's when a beanie comes into play. <laughs> oh yeah. Or just cut the bill right off. <laughs> so we're just gonna do a cheap set. I what does refer a cheap to this, set mean? I kind of refer to this as a garbage set. Garbage set is just, a little cheap warm-up set, a couple reps, just to get a feel for the exercise. And then I also, I uh, also call like the, the last set that you do on your way out the door a garbage set, because those are the ones that you that don't really do anything for you, but you just want that little extra pump on the way out the door. On the way to the grocery store to hit on chicks. Yep, yeah, exactly. So you just move these around for a few. Yeah, even though we got warm with our uh, PE class and our side laterals, our lateral raises. People always talk shit on side laterals. You guys fucking get it. Yeah. Double. We'll still warm up each exercise individually along a whole workout. You want to touch, you can't just go onto our working set, which, you know, Mark might be 100s and Damon's might be 80s or some bullshit. I'm going to come out of the 20s. closet. You still just want to warm up each one individually, get a feel for the rhythm of the movement. Also, just like kicking something up, it's all just a little bit different. Sometimes people make a big deal about whether your back is arched on stuff like this. I'm not too worried about stuff like that. If you want, you can shift your hips forward a little bit and you can have this be somewhere in between an, almost like an incline press and a straight overhead press. Kind of more of just a comfort thing. For myself with the overhead press, my arms kind of want to push this way a lot uh, just from years of bench pressing. So it's hard to get the weights up and back the right way. Uh, let's do a drop set. What do you think? Start with like 90 and go down. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna do, because I'm doing three different sets in one, probably somewhere in a five to eight rep range for each one, just so I'm not doing a shit ton of overall reps. Three for the price of one. <gasps> yeah, as we were talking about Jack and Tan being heavier in the beginning, obviously a compound movement, something you're using multiple joints with is gonna start the workout. And also like a heavier uh, intensity, closer to your one rep max. So if we did do overhead, which we're not gonna do because we just, we're all fucked up, uh, you'd maybe do sets of four to eight, a little bit heavier. And then you could come here and do sets of maybe eight to 15, and then we'll trickle our way down as we go through the workout. Yeah, you wanna try to use, use an exercise that you can act, actually use some weight on. The exercise you're probably gonna use the most weight on would be a barbell overhead press, even again, using a little bit of uh, body English. And the same thing goes for arms, same thing goes for biceps or triceps or any movement that you're, anything you're trying to grow on, you can apply uh, this style of training to. You can do lower reps with bicep curls. Damon and I did it the other day. We did uh, a couple sets of four with, I don't know how heavy we got. We just went as heavy as we could. It was kind of pathetic to be honest with you. It was no, <laughs> no CT Fletcher, uh, no CT Fletcherness, but we uh, just worked up to set some heavy sets of four. Then we went uh, down in weight and did sets of 10 and then 
finished up with cable type movements and things like that. Kind of a stereotypical bodybuilder may have like a shoulder day or maybe they'll do like shoulders and triceps or something, but if you're a power lifter and your main goal is to build up your bench, this is a workout you can throw in uh, either on your third pressing day or if you're only pressing twice a week after your bench press. So if you go a heavy bench day, light bench day, throw this in after that kind of as your uh, bodybuilder accessory work. There you go, Damon, get him moving. Look at me, I'm Damon, I bench 450. Ooh, look how big my arms are. <laughs> I'm in Air Force. These are gonna blow right off my body. <laughs> I'm in Air Force, I'm basically Tom Cruise. Yeah. He's Navy. <laughs> oh, I haven't even seen that movie. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> He's <in the> Navy. <laughs> Fuck Tom Cruise. Is there any good Air Force movies? Nothing, This huh? is really, with, with you doing them, this is really a military press. Wah, wah, bonk. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> we'll do the civilian press back here. Yeah. Us maggots. <laughs> there you go, Damon. All day. I've got the power of the mustache. There you go, Mikey. Mm. Mm. Another thing this does, a big drop set like this, kind of just like a, just a massive uh, superset basically. Ow. And uh, it's just going to help you burn more calories. So those of you that hate dieting, ah! you cannot, <laughs> uh, you cannot outlift and outwork your diet necessarily. Because it's 72.3% of what you're but doing. But you can make some changes in your training, some small changes in your training to help you burn a lot more calories and help you get a lot more jacked and tan. So some small changes in your diet, cutting out some junk here and there, cutting back on a few calories and then adding in a few supersets at the end of the extra end of the workout. Mike's been jumping rope in between some I've been doing bicep something different lately. Bicep tricep work. Um, or just simply just superset and stuff back and forth. If you don't like to do cardio, you could superset it. Ow, that hurt. All right. Mike's only gonna do one set because he's natural. <laughs> My recovery's a little different. They're natty, cheaters. Natty bodybuilding. No cuffs, all natty, no creatine. Now we're gonna do uh, oh. some side laterals. Um, remember we started with them to kind of pre-exhaust. We're gonna do a drop set, a giant drop set with the side lateral, two dumbbell movements, followed by one cable movement. And again, you can get a little body English into these. The good thing about these drop set is, or the good thing about these drop sets are, is that um, you only need to do like one or two sets of them because you're doing a lot of work in a short period of time. So here we go. Again, just trying to hold it at the top a little bit. Some of the bodybuilding purists would say to not come in front of the body. Heard that before from guys like Charles Glass. And Charles Glass obviously knows a lot more than me, but I like to use a little bit more weight and get a little swing into it. More weight! So some people like to be out here and keep it real strict, but too many torn rotator cuffs and torn pecs to even try that. Dropping down from the 30 to the 25. The key is to find a weight that is really gonna get you fatigued kind of quickly. That first weight that I chose might have been a little light. So now just running right into the cable. Cable will be the lightest one of the three, set at 20 pounds. And this one's really gonna kill because the cable has a little bit more constant tension on it. it's interesting about you do sets like this a drop set everything just starts to get activated once the main muscle is fatigued there traps start burning you see everything's kind of, everything's getting involved and as a power lifter that's good isolation is great but when we're doing a squat bench or deadlift 
There's not really a whole lot of isolation going on. Everything's being used. Even our cacks. There's all kinds of little tricks you can do whenever somebody's using a cable. As Damon's going here, if you can keep going for a little bit more, try to make people hold it at the top by giving them a little bit of a push and then try to make them resist on the way down. There's all kinds of crazy torturous methods you can utilize. For some reason, on a lot of these movements, when somebody helps and gives you a little bit of assistance, especially on something like a lap pull down or some sort of row, they give you a little bit of assistance and you're able to pull a little further and you're able to actually flex a little bit harder. That's why you see some bodybuilding coaches sometimes do that with the people that they're training. It's not that they're trying to get up on them, it's that they're trying to get them to activate their muscles a little bit more. Next thing we're gonna move into is uh, an upright row, a uh, plate front raise, and uh, after that we're gonna get into uh, a rear delt movement. Sometimes upright rows will bug people's shoulders. Anybody who's had a rotator cuff thing, sometimes it will bug your shoulders. Just take it in whatever range of motion you can get it to. Um, sometimes you might have to pull back from the machine a little bit so you're not coming up. Sometimes if you try to really drive the elbows up, you can see mine don't go up all that great, but if you're really trying to drive the elbows up, sometimes we get some pain in the shoulder. So for those of you that have that issue, you can just pull the weight a little bit more, which will get a little bit away from the shoulders, a little bit more in the upper back, but still get some of the front of the shoulder. You're saying the upper cac? Uh -huh. I'm gonna be fit 2017. New you, 2016, new year. 2017, 2018, I'm gonna be fit. I'm not gonna be fat anymore, I promise. Till Ben and Jerry shows up. Oh, knocking I love me some Ben and Jerry's. Knocking at your door. Front raise with the plate. Main thing is don't hit yourself in the wanger. You didn't know I was that fast. Did what are you, a ninja? Uh huh. Yeah, we can do them that way, or we can pay homage to the man over here, <laughs> Stanley. So we hit here and here, and now we need to get... Where? We need to get back here. This little guy right here. That's what chicks are into right there. This muscle right here. The rear delt gets the ladies? The rear delt. Because if you have the rear delts, then the ladies know that you have a place to rest the bar for squats. And, and chicks, less their legs. Chicks love it, yeah, right, to support their legs, yeah. yeah. Chicks love a guy with a big squat, right? That's what I hear. So here we just have a simple uh, bent over lateral raise, getting a rear delt, and we're gonna do a face pull, followed by a really old school, old fashioned bodybuilder exercise that we'll show you in a second. 10 to 15 here, you can pull them this way, you can pull them this way, doesn't really matter too much. Always try to resist a little bit on the way down. I kind of suggest that for all assistance exercises, just because they're typically stuff that you do for higher reps. And you're trying to get some isolation. People think I'm old, that I'm falling apart, but I'm just getting started, you motherfuckers. And those 25 pound dumbbells are proof of that. Now to the fat face pull. Those Rogue monolift hooks are in my way. The ones that are sold on roguefitness.com that I get a royalty for. Look, they're in my way, see that? Every time I go here, the Rogue monolift attachments for the rack that are sold on roguefitness.com are in my way. Knees are bent a little bit, looking like you're ready to fucking water ski or some shit, and then pull like this. If you have better shoulder mobility than me, then you want to actually pull the rope a little bit more towards your eyes. But for me, that shit hurts, so I pull it towards my third chin. Starting to wheeze a little bit. That's because I have cholesterol and saturated fat running through my veins. You 
You can do this with the cables lower too and be more bent down. There's a bunch of different ways to do them. Ow, I'm sweating. Oh my God, everything hurts so bad. We don't normally work out like this, YouTubers. This well, for you. if there's a camera on. <laughs> 20 more. There's our military for you, huh? We think about grabbing these little black balls, Mike. Makes me feel like home. Huh? 1001, 1002. The biggest goddamn root delts this side of the Mississippi River. 1003. <sighs> ah, yep. Fuck. Whew, I can't breathe. Or see. Is that good or bad? You're halfway there. Mike really cares. He's concerned about my health. Look at him. Lifter Crammer King. Engage. Well, and then uh, step four we didn't really talk about is uh, the recovery. Uh, and you really need to find your quickest route to the ice cream buffet. Ooh. If you can get to an ice cream buffet within 30 minutes of this whole ordeal, the Froyo Gelato Sunday will really do you right. The way I like to go to the ice cream buffet is this way. Is that a post route? And I like to pretend that I'm going here. Oh. But I actually run the pattern and I veer off back towards the middle of the field. Oh. Yeah. So it's a it's an ice cream buffet fake out. Right. Yeah, people think I'm going for steak, but I'm going for ice cream. What are you, Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> yeah. No, more like Randy Moss. Oh. Yeah. Glitter, glisten, gloss, or, uh, gloss. I catch a beat running like Randy Moss. <laughs> or Gronk. Gronkowski. Anyway, that's a <laughs> motherfucking workout. Uh, we blitzed the shoulders. We did a lot of shit. And um, you don't have to do that many sets as we did today. You can do more sets of each individual movement, or you can even add more to it if you want. But like I said, we hit the front, we hit the sides, and of course, the back. We hit it from the back. <laughs> so we got all the aspects of the shoulder. I think they're called heads. Ooh. We hit every head. Oh, we hit all the heads of the shoulder. <laughs> We're gonna have cap shoulders. Now everyone's gonna start rumors. Hmm. The rumors are gonna fly. The 3D caps. Um, let's see, what the fuck else? Oh, we <laughs> didn't do any uh, like rotator cuff type stuff, but if you wanna mix some of that in, this would be a good day to mix some of that in. If you're pulling your uh, bench day. If you're pulling your face pulls a little bit higher, you can kind of get some of that external rotation, like Mark said, his mobility, shit. Uh, but you can use a little bit lighter weight. And you get the rear delts and uh, external rotators at the same time. So that's basics of how to be jacked and tan. Remember, we start the workout heavy. You know, we start the workout with a warm up, then we start the workout heavy. And as the workout progresses, it goes into lighter weights, higher reps, more sets, bigger paychecks. Big packs, <laughs> more like sets. That. All right, I think that's it, right? That's it. Bitch! Strength is never weakness, and that is it from Super Training Gym. Later. Can you make more noise in the background, please? <laughs>